From cardboard to scrap metal, to huts made of straw, mud, or even ice, the human race requires shelter. People in every country, on every continent, have devised ways to stay protected from the elements. Yet more than a third of the human population live in substandard shelters, or without them completely. Following one of the world's most destructive tsunamis in December 2004, Indonesia was challenged to meet the needs of its citizens. This situation was aggravated by a devastating earthquake on the Indonesian island of Java in May of 2006. The region most seriously affected by the earthquake lies on the Bantul Plain, south of Yogyakarta. This plain is densely populated, with people living in small villages separated by rice fields. According to the latest news, there have been over 6,000 deaths, while more than 36,000 people have been injured, 135,000 houses damaged, and an estimated 1.5 million left homeless. Around 5 million people live within 50 kilometers of the epicenter. In July 2006, the Domes for the World Foundation, DFTW, was contacted by the World Association of Non-Governmental Organizations, WONGO, to discuss the possibility of building a village of monolithic eco-shell domes in the Jogja region. The village would serve as a model of disaster-safe, permanent, economical, sanitary, and efficient construction standards in a community setting. Later in July, architect Rick Crandall of Crandall Design Group and Rebecca South, president of Domes for the World, traveled to the Yogyakarta region of Indonesia. There, the team worked with Gajah Mata University, local government leaders, and residents in the area to not only locate a focus village, but to design the new village in every detail. After the completion of an in-depth field study, it was jointly decided to rebuild the village of Nelepin, a picturesque village in the Sleman district near the Great Hindu Temple in Prambanan. During the 2006 earthquake, the homes in Nelepin were not only rocked by the quake, but many houses were, in effect, swallowed whole by a catastrophic landslide. As a result of this landslide, it was decided the village should be relocated to a nearby open flat tract of land. New Nelepin, as it now will be called, would include 72 houses and six laundry, toilet, and shower facilities called MCKs. The homes are clustered in groups of 12, surrounding an MCK and green space. Six new wells have been drilled to supply each cluster with potable water at the source. Six independent septic systems have been installed. At the peak of construction, 370 Indonesian workers were employed at New Nelepin. Crews rotated from grading the site, road building, foundation pouring, and dome construction. The eco shell begins as a combination ring beam footing and concrete slab floor, reinforced with steel rebar. An air form is attached to the ring base and then inflated. A grid of rebar is then placed over the exterior of the air form. Next, enough concrete is applied to the exterior of the air form to embed the rebar and then it is troweled smooth. After the concrete is set, the air form is deflated and reused. Eco shells are quick to construct. A home can be built in as little as one day. They are earthquake, tornado, hurricane, and fire resistant. Eco shells are impervious to mold, bugs, and rot. They cost up to 50% less to build than conventional structures of a similar size, and also use about half as much materials. Eco shells can be built utilizing untrained local labor and will last for centuries. Each home is equipped with ample ventilation, lighting, and power outlets. Residents can choose whether or not to use electricity by simply flicking a switch in their homes. Clean drinking water flows from every faucet in every kitchen in the village. This village will be a great leap in living standards for those who will reside there. Because of cost savings in the original estimate, additional buildings have been approved to begin construction, including a mosque, primary school, and medical clinic. Now that this village has been built, newly trained crews and equipment are on site and ready to be used in larger Indonesian reconstruction efforts. The eco shells and technology used in creating this community will directly affect the way every resident feels today about their lives and their prospects. By constructing homes instead of shelters for those in need, they are provided the opportunity to better their lives. Safe and clean living conditions promote more opportunities for education and a sustainable livelihood. 
The shared goal of Wongo and DFTW is not to merely build buildings, but to help uplift entire communities and empower them to find their own paths to peace, prosperity, health, and happiness. Because there is no reason why people in this world should have no homes. There is no reason that some people have many homes and others have none. Still, entire communities remain untouched since the earthquake's devastation. Some places lost more than 80% of their homes, while irrigation systems have been destroyed. There is much talk about sustainable development. But now, the equipment and manpower is in place that can help turn the rhetoric to reality.